Alright. Um, I always watch Yay! TV. Yay! I watched a new anime on TV. It was a lot of fun and relaxing as well. Ha ha! Amy, I've prepared your favorite cake. Thanks, Gwenda, but I'd like to stay alone for a while and rest, okay? I didn't sleep very well at the hospital. I had too much on my mind. That's fine. Get some rest. You could eat a piece of cake tomorrow morning before you go to work. Good night, Gwenda. Ooh, you're actually pretty. I went to my bedroom with Nina in my arms and sat down at the desk. I picked a notebook and decided to try and get my feelings in control in the most familiar way I knew, writing about them. I picked up a pen and started writing a poem. Your gentle touch, the warmth of your embrace, the passion of your kiss, precious times that felt ever so divine. I thought that they would never leave, but even though I can't reach you anymore, I can't open my eyes to find you there. I'll always have my memories. Though they are not as warm as the hands that always made me feel so safe, I know that they will never disappear as you have, as now you have, as you now have. Fuck! I was so close! My beloved, my heart is forever yours. Even if you're lost beyond where my trembling voice can reach you, even if your memories fade or disappear into darkness, I'll never forget the precious times when we face the world together. My beloved, for today, for tomorrow, for the days that may never return, never forget the words that were ex once exchanged. I love you. <sighs> when I awoke that morning, I knew that I had to go to the ice cream parlor. It was Sunday and I had a long shift to attend to. That uniform is fucking cute. I considered calling out, knowing that they would understand if I explained the situation, but decided that it would be best to go in anyway. Otherwise, everyone would start to worry about me. I had no doubt the news of the accident was already traveling quickly. Gossip seemed to get around in the town eerily fast. I got ready and arrived at the, ship, the shop 15 minutes before the start of my shift. I hadn't wanted to dwell at home, though as soon as I walked in I knew I was too early. It was still early morning, and there were only a few customers around. Who the fuck gets ice cream at dawn? I was surprised to catch sight of a familiar face seated at one of the tables, apparently taking a break from work. <laughs> oh my god. Oh ho ho. Hey, Amy, are you alright? I'm sorry, he just looks like he would be voiced by Canada. From Italia. I couldn't help but notice the genuine worry on his expression when he saw the bruises on my arms and legs. I approached his con I appreciated his concern. I didn't approach his concern. Like, hey, concern, how you going? Hi how you doing? Fuck! Good morning, Lawrence. I'm doing okay. Are you sure? Those bruises look really painful. Yes, I'm sure. They really aren't as bad as they look. Really? I don't know if I could work with bruises like that. Big, big, wit. I am so bad. I don't know if I could work with bruises that big. You are a strong woman who don't need no man. Heh, <sighs> I can hardly feel them. Thanks, though. How did it happen? You're not in any trouble, are you? Keep your privacy. I'm not really interested in this guy. It really isn't a big deal. But you're hurt. What happened? I'd rather not talk about it. But Amy, can't you at least tell me? I'm getting worried about you. How did you get hurt so badly? I'm sorry, but my shift is starting soon. Please, I have to know if someone did this to you. No one did anything to me. It's not like that. Then why? It isn't any of your business. I'm sorry, but I have to go... Um. I have to go clock in now. Yeah, yeah. I have a bad relationship with him now. I don't really care. I'm not that interested in him anyway. 
Without another word, I left him waiting at the table with an ice cream cone now melting in his hand. During the summer, Amy works part-time from morning to noon, from Monday to Friday, as a waitress for an ice cream parlor owned by an old friend of Gwenda's. Wait, wrong ways. She gets paid with only with tips, usually around five dollars each turn. Being kind to the customers will earn her more money, so depending on her mood, she can earn more. There are good and bad days, but in general, working will always lower her energy by a good amount and her morale by a small amount. This energy can be restored in several ways. Some are drinking or eating, relaxing or taking a nap at home, and at the end of the day, when you get in bed. There are other ways to gain both energy and morale, and also to improve Amy's stats, but discovering them is a part of the fun of playing this game! Now the workday will start and you'll see the results. If this first week goes bad, don't worry. This is normal since Amy's morale is very low because of what just happened. Pretend you didn't see that. I wasn't really in the right mood to be kind to customers. Who's awesome? I'm awesome. I worked hard and I did an awesome job. At noon, your regular shift is over. But you can come here again and decide to do overtime if you have enough morale and energy in the evening. You can also come here anytime to perform other actions, like talking with Lords, who works here full time every day until evening, or get an ice cream for yourself. Remember though, doing overtime is a very stressing action, and if your morale is low, it's a very bad idea. I still feel weak. It, better, it would be better if I get back home now. I don't think they would allow me to see Yaren yet anyway. When I got home after work, I found the house empty except for my cat Nina. Nina and I went up to my room and I turned the computer on to check my email, mostly to see if there was any news from Aaron's family or the hospital. I knew it was rather unlikely to have more cor correspondence from them so soon, but couldn't help but hold on to the hope that they were doing s they would that, that there would be something new. I sat on my desk and looked around my inbox, scanning the titles and senders of the new and unread messages. I frowned when I saw that there was nothing new from Eddie or anyone else from the hospital crew. Nothing good. Too bad. I decided to do some research on amnesia. It took a bit. It took a while before I found anything interesting, but after a bit of searching around, I found the following explanations for th about the basics of amnesia. amnesia. Amnesia is a condition in which memory is disturbed or lost completely. People can forget about the things that they did, or will simply fail to remember the things that they are currently doing in the near future. I kept writing, but only got confused from the more complicated medical terms. I was distracted from my reading when a small notification box popped up saying I had a new email popped up. From secret admirer at net.rr.edu to amy21 at mybookreviews.com Subject, you. You have one new inbox message. I clicked on it a bit absentmindedly since the address was unknown. Maybe I should stop. I dropped my mic. Nothing, nothing too bad. Oh no. Never mind. Okay. Nina hopped up onto my desk and meowed rather loudly. Well, I suppose it wouldn't hurt to see what it is, right, Nina? I opened the email, eyeing the unknown address warily. The message was simple and written in plain black text. Hey there, Amy. I hear you're quite the poet. I'd love to read more of your work, but you don't really share it with anyone, do you? I'm a big fan, and your secret admirer, as the saying goes. Keep writing, girl. Ignore the message. I shook my head slightly and clicked back to the inbox, deciding to ignore the unusual message. I was about to check my book review blog when the computer shut down. I tried to restart it several times. But nothing happened. My computer just had to break at a time like this. For a moment I thought it might have been a virus from that mysterious email, but then realized that that was silly. The computer wouldn't even turn on, so the fear failure was clearly in the hot, hard, hardware fuck. Nina was still sitting on my desk, giving me a puzzled look. Great, now I won't be able to check my email or blog from home anymore. 
pretend you didn't see that. Ugh, my computer broke. I'll have to buy a new one. Why is this happening all at once? I must go to sleep now. Tomorrow I have to work. You look interesting. That was easy. I slept really well and I dreamed I was in a world made of ice cream. What are you, five? I need to hurry. My morning shift at the ice cream shop starts soon. That was easy. I worked hard and I did an awesome job. <laughs> oh. I could do much better than this. I want to go to that back to the hospital day. I want to see Aaron. I miss him. Where the fuck is the hos is this a hospital? Where the fuck is okay. I went to the hospital to go visit Aaron, but as soon as I entered his room, I had the feeling the visit wasn't going to go very well. Good morning, Aaron. Hi. How are you feeling today? A little better, thanks. He smiled at me politely, but without any of the tenderness I was used to seeing. An awkward silence settled in as I sat down at the chair beside his bed. Lacking any other ideas to get the conversation going, I decided to start with something simple. I didn't want to pressure him with anything that the medics wouldn't approve of me discussing with him. How's the hospital food around here? Is it okay? It's pretty good. Definitely better than I can cook. Hee <laughs> hee. Glad you like it, but I'm not sure you're not that bad of a cook. But I'm sure you're not that bad of a cook, shit. You've never had my cooking, then. I went to say I had, but quickly restrained. He wasn't a very good cook, but it made it more fun when he came to the ice cream parlor or when I cooked for him. By the way, I was wondering... Yes? Who are you? The question was so simple, so polite, so impersonal. But it still broke my heart. Ah! Uh, ooh, shit. I didn't mean to click that. Okay, his words hurt and they cut too deeply for my facade to remain in place. Aaron, don't you recognize me at all? No, sorry, I don't. My name is Amy. Does that ring any bells? No. Unable to hold the words back, I had to simply tell him the truth. Aaron, I'm your girlfriend. A look of shock came over his face when I re revealed the truth to him. That's impossible. I don't remember that at all. The bluntness of his response hurt, but not as much as the initial question. He looked clearly upset by my words, and the monitor beside his bed revealed that his pulse started to increase rapidly. But it's true! No, it's not. I already have... Before he could finish, two medics hurried into his room, one carrying a ready needle. Ah! It's okay, I don't like you that much anyway. I couldn't get a word in edgewise since things moved too quickly. One of the medics pulled me out of the room, while the other told me to calm down and injected him with the needle. A relaxed expression came over his face almost immediately, and I realized they were sedating him. Uh, once we were out in the hallway, a nurse cast me a stern look. I get it, I fucked up, okay? Miss, you can't tell him things like that. Did you see how much you upset him? I'm sorry. Even after I left the hospital, something still haunted my mind. What was he about to say? I already have. I honestly didn't want to think about what it could have meant. You're on your own now. Use the map to move between various locations, and then click on the icons to perform actions. Explore all the locations to get familiar with the different activities that you can do. Will you manage to reunite with Aaron, or will you fall in love with someone else? It's up to you. I'm gonna fuck it up. I'm notoriously bad at these. Library! Ah, oh, the library is my favorite place to be. Here I can borrow new books to read at home, practice my writing skills, or during the weekends I can attend to create creative writing courses in the evening. 
I can also use the library's computer to access the internet and update my personal blog, where I review books and check my email. New books arrive every Monday and Friday, so I make sure to come here on those days if I want to get a chance to get new books. Mm. Update my blog. Yay! I just finished a big review and posted it online. I'm sure my readers will like it. It's late. I need to get back home now. I must go to sleep now. Tomorrow I have work. Yeah, see, I'm completely fucking this up already. Nina came to sleep near my feet and her presence made me sleep peacefully. I was getting ready to leave for the ice cream shop when the phone rang. Hello? Miss Bitch? Oh yes, I'm Amarantha. Are you Eddie? Yes, I need to talk with you about Aaron. Is everything alright? Yes, don't worry. Everything is okay. I heard you paid him a visit yesterday, and I'd like to talk to you about some things. We agreed to meet in his op- but my eye itches. In the afternoon, after my shift at the ice cream shop ended. I need to hurry. My morning shift at the ice cream shop starts soon. Fucking go to work. That could have gone better. Oh, you failed. That could have gone better. I quickly change clothes and I get ready to go to the hospital to talk with Eddie. I wonder what he wants to talk about. As soon as I entered the hospital, I met with Eddie. He nodded at me and made a gesture for, to follow him into his office. I took a deep breath, vaguely registering the sound of footsteps tapping their way through the corridor. Eddie led me to his office and I distantly noticed his occasional glances, though I was too absorbed in my own frantic thoughts to care. You could, you could get with it with the doctor, Amarantha. We stepped through the door and he quietly closed it behind me. Please, have a seat. I sunk into a cushioned chair in front of the desk and watched him hopefully. Tell me how he can get better. Well, you have to understand that his condition is somewhat difficult to treat. Will of course be encouraging his memory to return by talking to his family and friends, putting him in situations of previous memories, things like that. The therapist can tell you more about exactly what they'll be doing. There's also the possibility of prescribing him certain medicines, but we only keep that option for extreme cases. I nodded, hanging on to his every word. The key is that he regains his memory slowly and carefully. The sort of Psychology might is not my specialty, but we have to be careful of any psychological stress. Amnesia is tricky to begin with, and we can't risk any more complications by trying to force him to remember. My heart sank. So what you're saying is he won't be remembering me anytime soon? He looked at me kindly. Probably not, but there is a way you can help. How? Tell me, I'll do anything. Well, you know him very well. It would be great to help if you could think of situations that might help him regain some memories. Situations from his past. Places he's been, activities he likes, things like that. I nodded my head slowly, trying to reconcile myself to all the unbelievable things that happened recently. Fucking cry. But the truth was difficult to accept. In a full, awful realization sunk in, my tired mind and body can bear no longer. Tears formed unwittingly at the corners of my eyes, and they dripped down my face in rivulets. My shoulders began to shake as I covered my face, with my hands trying desperately to muffle the sounds of limitation. Eddie hovered awkwardly, uncomfortable and at near total loss of what to do. Pulling himself together, he walked forward and knelt on the ground in front of me and rested his hands on my shoulders. Samarantha, call me Amy. Amy, it'll be alright. It's not that bad. Do you really think so? I know so. It's very encouraging that he didn't lose his entire memory, only that of the last few years. And even if it doesn't come back, you can always make new memories. I nodded at his words and smile, wiping away tears. Yes! I'm getting with the doctor! Thank you, Eddie. Now, excuse me, m Miss... Amy, Amy, yeah, but I have to go.
fucking... Where can I even go? Ooh, I can go clubbing! 